Hey, just in case you're just joining us, welcome to the Happy Money Mindset Show, where wealth experts are showing you how to create a new happy relationship with money so you can tap into your divine wealth and abundance. I'm so excited and so honored to have our guest here today, Miss Anna. She's here. Hey, <laughs> welcome everyone. Help me welcome her to the virtual stage. I just know your life will never be the same after this. She is going to raise your vibration. She's going to tune you into your flow of abundance. And before we begin, you guys, I want to start out with saying how I met Anna. I so a little while back, I was taking this leadership program. And in this big program, there's like a hundred of us, and we all were broken into these small groups. And I'm in this like Zoom room, kind of like this. I'm in this small room, and we are all we have this this stretch. And this stretch was to reach out to people and just pour generosity into these folks and stand in their vision and just pour love into them. And so I'm down here like this on my phone. And I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I'm down here on my phone and I'm, I'm texting away, pouring love into someone and this coach enters the room. And there was a couple people that were, that were in a breakdown. They were having a hard moment and I could just hear this coach. Like if she was this spiritual source arm, she came and was like picking them up. Like it was this beautiful song coming out of her, this language of just breaking them through the moment they were in. And it was distracting me, you guys. I was like, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm trying to like text. I'm texting. Like, yeah, I'm like, I'm like, stop it. I'm like, who is this? And I look up and it's Anna. And she's one of the leading coaches of that program. And I'm in, my jaw is dropped. And I'm just like, she's speaking to my soul. Mm -hmm. And I knew at that moment that I got to do whatever it takes to get her to be my best friend because that's how amazing she is. And that's why she's here on the show, you guys. This is incredible that you have such a wealth of wisdom that's gonna be poured out on you today. So I just thank you. I'm honored that you're here, Anna. Thank, thank you, Derica. That's so sweet. I'm like, wow. And I remember that moment too. Like I, I, I remember moments that are, that are really powerful. And I remember coming into the room and having that conversation. So it was, it was really amazing. And now here we are. Here it is. Talk about manifesting you guys right here. This is just a miracle that this is happening. And now she's here for you guys. I'm going to go a bit in just her bio so we can connect with Anna just a little bit more. And then we're going to get into those juicy questions. That's going to change your life. Okay. So let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Anna guides spiritual women entrepreneurs in creating their sacred success in alignment with divine purpose and prosperity. Anna is devoted to creating a world of harmony, unity, purpose, and prosperity within and without for all of life through new earth leaders. Mm. And she has a rich story, you guys, but just, that's a little tap yeah. into yeah. who this woman is. Yeah, um, you can can read more. I'm sure there is the, the rest of it is there. So let's just get into the topic because I love I love talking about it because of what it can create in the world. So Let's talk about it. Let's talk about happy. I love it. Happy, happy money. <laughs> yes, happy money, you guys. That's why we're here. Happy money. So I'm going to dive into that big question. It's what was your relationship with money early on? And then there's a two part here. What was the moment that that pivot, that pivot moment that completely changed your flow of money? Mm, okay. So I was born and raised in Poland. At a time um, when, like, if anybody knows history, um, it was a socialist Poland. I know what it's like when government changes the, the value of money. So overnight, whatever money you had is, is worth a fraction of what it was. I lived at a time, and this was, I was a girl, a little girl. I came to America when I was 16, but I lived at those times. So even though to me, this is the, that's the only way I saw experience of money, it's still, this is what I was raised with, right? Mm -hmm. There was a time in a country where I lived in, in Poland, where there was... There were there were things you could buy, but you could only buy so much because government would 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 um, literally give you coupons and coupons directed how much of it you could buy. So pound of sugar for a family of four for a month. So 
I grew up with this with this lock and somebody outside of you has control of your money. They can literally devalue it overnight and they tell you how much they pay you. Government would take taxes out of money. So my parents just got money after taxes. So I grew up with all of that and then I came to America and America was this promised land, right? And around land of opportunity. And very quickly, my life went in the direction that in my 20s, I became a millionaire and complete like, fry my, my system and experience that I would, I watched in the movies. It, it's, I just didn't know how to be with. So I got to experiences. I got to enjoy it sort of because part of me was not okay with it for many reasons, right? Many stories that I, that I just, that's yeah. why, that's why, you know, they say that so many people who win lottery lose the money. That's exactly what happened. I pushed it all away because I wasn't comfortable with it. I didn't know who to be with the wealth that just came into my life. So when you ask what was one moment, right? Like one particular moment changed my relationship with money. It wasn't even then because I kept going with my life and two more times I created wealth, not to the same degree, but I created wealth and then again, pushed it away or created situations that made it go away. Yeah. And it wasn't until I, and that this was the moment when I realized that no matter how much money I created, there was still part of me that wasn't okay with having it, wasn't satisfied, wasn't fulfilled. So for me, it was connection with great, all the money and all the money and fulfillment, all the money and connection with something bigger. Now I didn't have a quite, I didn't have the language to talk about source or spirit, but once I got on that journey, it led me to the whole industry of coaching, which is now that I'm a part of, and led me to a coach that spoke about the secret energy of money. I had no idea what it was, but when I heard it, I was like a fly to the light, like a moth to the light, right? I'm like, give me, give me, give me. And it began a journey for me to really understand what is, if money isn't the tangible thing that we are all taught it is, now, when I say tangible, now it's electronic, so it's not so tangible anymore, but it still is this thing, right? Like if there is more to money than I don't know about that I want to know because I had it, I loved having it, and I hated having it at the same time. And then when it went away, I was like, how do I get it? How do I get it? There was this like, there, there was emotional interaction with it that I wasn't aware of. There was clearly spiritual aspect of it that I wasn't aware of. So when I heard secret energy of money, I was like salivating. Mm -hmm. And that gave a new, that gave me a two track journey for a while. And I still do it. I was demystifying the whole idea of, you know, when people say do something you love and money will come, it's not always true, but there is a huge part to it that really matters. So what I, the way that I love to connect money with our experience on a physical, on, on a physical plane is when you start really, truly acknowledging that nobody outside of you is determining how much money you make or how much money you keep, that there isn't a somebody outside of you who says what you, what you can or cannot do for money. I mean, we live in America, so I, I know not everybody is this lucky and I know that there are people in different situations, but really all of all of it, our whole experience of money is created. It was created by humans. We created experience of money as a form of exchange for energy. Now it was energy materialized, right? So when you want something and I, and, and I, and I have it, then you'll have to give me something for it. I know many of your guests will probably talk about, it was like, give me a goat for the pair of shoes, right? When it got inconvenient, we introduced shells and seeds and then money. Yeah. But really, it was invented by a human, right? And it represents something. So we're getting into this understanding now. And it, I know we are as humanity. And if you're watching this, if you're here, you already, you already know it or you have some awareness of it. Money is really an expression, a physical manifestation of an energy. And this energy is really dictated by our own being. So let me just say this. For one period of my life, I had this vision that I would open a closet and a pot of gold would be sitting in there. And I could just take coins of gold and then, you know, sell it, or, you know, exchange it for money. But when I took this, you know, gold coin, two more would be created. And I would, could just live like that if I just imagine it, if I just think about it, right? And I think I lived like that for like a year or two where I was just in this like magic. It's just literally, I had, a, I lived in this one place, 
It was a closet that opened like this. And every single day I, I envisioned that I would open a closet and money would sit there. Money never showed up. But what I realized is in that time, I was guided into tremendous opportunities because money isn't about money in a closet, right? Or whatever your version of it is. Although some people will claim it shows up in their bank account. I had it happen once. I did. I was so intentional that the bank made a mistake and transferred the exact amount I asked for. And a month later, they came asking back for it. So <laughs> now some could say, I guess I didn't believe that it could really happen. Could maybe, but I learned a lesson, but I learned a lesson. I didn't truly exchange energy for energy, which is how I see money. We are here to contribute and we're here to serve each other. And when we serve each other, we in exchange receive money. We exchange energy for energy and the symbol of it is money. So there were many different things that I got to learn along the way. And I hope I never, I never, I'm never complete learning. I hope there is always the next level. But one of the things that I learned is that money is unlimited. It really truly is. And you know how I know that? Because based on history, there is a lot more money now than there ever was in the world before. Right. Like yeah. they, they have proof for that. <laughs> yes. right? there are, yeah, there are a lot more millionaires than there ever were. So there is more money in the world. Right. That is such a big moment as like you're saying that I'm like, yes, because one of the big things out in society is that there's not enough to go around. And it's this whole uncomfortable conversation like there's just look, there's a lot of scarcity, there's a lot of you know, just broke and poor and homeless and, and all of this. And then, you know, there's only enough for this people and not for here. But that mm -hmm. what you just said was absolutely true, that there is endless amounts of money for everyone for lifetimes mm -hmm. that there is here. And it's here in what you just said with money as an expression of energy. And it's just literally the difference of what someone is emitting out in their energy for their money. Mm -hmm. So the homeless versus the millionaire is that energy expression mm -hmm. right yeah. so it's like wow that just like i know we gotta take a moment to really let that sink in you guys but there's i promise anna's right there's a lot of money to go around there's more than enough to go around and and what you're tapping into is this this energy this expression of this exchange mm -hmm. there's this frequency about you mm -hmm. so Anna, if i could ask you because that that's all powerful and we're tapping into our magic i know everyone's feeling it and if there's something that is blocking that person right now, if they're, what is that in all your years of coaching and just mm -hmm. being here on this planet, what do you think is the number one limiting belief, that energy in someone's brain that is blocking their flow? Yeah. What do you so, think that number one thing is? Yeah. So we already know there are many, right? And I will focus on one particular one that I, that, that I see the most for the people that I'm attracting. Well, no, there is no surprise there, just so you know, <laughs> because we attract our mirrors. So first of all, the lack, right? It's limited. So let me just give you something that I learned that I started to embody. And when I did, I started to see the transactions differently, the transactions of exchange. Money doesn't come from, it comes through. So every single time when somebody chooses to, to let the money come through them and towards my business, towards what it is that I am supporting them with, I am a stand that it comes through them. Now, when something comes through somebody, then there is an opening, right? It isn't just like from here to there. It's through. It's like, it circulates, it's through, which means if they are open, if they're open, then a lot more could come into them because life always seeks more expression. So whatever comes, if they let, let if they let it come through, right, with, with the proper mindset, with the proper um, reverence to what it is that they are doing with it, then they are an opening for more to come to them. And I really, really stand for that. Like I am a stand for that in the world. So I represent that. So when I choose to expend money out, right, I do it from a place of, wow, I'm just, I'm just creating more of it in the world when I do that. I'm just, I'm just a funnel for more of it for me, but also in the world. But wow. the thing that I see the most, isn't it so delicious? But the thing that I see the most among my clients is this whole idea of limited worth, right? Self-worth, like I'm not worthy. Mm. And of course, it's because it's something that I've been working with 
most of my life and it's part of my life lesson so in the work that i do we discover the life lesson or this blind spot like there are many yes for sure and at the soul level there is one particular one that we come with that we came to grow through and every single time we own it and we work through it there is a next level but we also get bigger and more powerful in it so <clears throat> self-worth right and self-worth could be such a big thing right like i don't i don't think i'm worthy well the people that i tend to work with they they do not own the value of the energy that flows through them they mm -hmm. do not value the energy of that flows through them they don't own their gifts they don't value what it is that they are here to 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 share their gifts their spiritual gifts they don't value the impact that they're already making right so mm -hmm. the origin of the story could have many different versions but it comes down to i do not stand for the value of what it is that flows through me and out into the world. So we are the shape that shape the shape. We are the shape of what the energy that flows through us takes on. So the energy has no agenda. Life force has no agenda. It really doesn't. When it comes through us, it either comes as more of I'm not enough or what I share is not worthy of it, or it comes as more of mm. what I'm what I'm sharing is valuable. People are people are benefiting from it, and that's then what I stand for in the world. Right. So it's the shift of really recognizing that what I am creating is valuable. The world needs it. Um, the world wants it. And I am a stand for that. So it's self-worth, but I take it all the way to the value of the energy that flows through the shape that you are. And a shape that you are is all the stories that you have acquired, all the limiting beliefs about yourself, all the limiting beliefs about who you are and who even the fact that you're a miracle to be birthed on this earth so i work with a purpose a lot and purpose in my work isn't the thing you do it's actually who you be and when you be this in the world then what it is you are here to do and it could look many different ways will show up to you step after step and then you can be on purpose right yeah. so who you be if you have a limiting story about who you be like you have to prove your worth you have to do something in exchange for something else it doesn't matter how much like it doesn't matter who you be when you do it, it matters how much you do it, right? That's mm. the difference between two stories, right? If you really value who you are, who you were born to be, then the energy that flows through you flows with this sense of worth, Yeah. right? Yeah, that ties so beautifully on, on what you first said. And I'm gonna put this in layman terms because I'm not gonna do it. speak <laughs> so beautifully as she just did, but I'm gonna recap it. Uh, when, as, the the energy the the flow of money coming through you and as whatever you give out is like coming through you and it wraps around and now opens you to receive more of this divine abundance right so this opening whether you're investing with it, what you're putting out right anytime you and you put any economics or energy or effort whatever you're putting out as much as you put out you're going to get back in return mm -hmm. and so to to full circle that on like what's the number one thing that is stopping people or one of the number one things is that that hole is smaller because that that value it's what you're seeing is that lack of self-worth that lack of value and who you are and who you get to be is like narrowing the opening to your flow mm -hmm. and so like that when you were talking I seen that constrict like that that opening just kind of closed down yeah. and that's the lack of self-worth so if that is all what I what what is correct here in this moment, it's like, well, the self-love and the self-worth, the worthiness of your value and what you're putting now will help folks open this up. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let me let me put this caveat in really quickly because I know you have other um other speakers who are a lot more who are a lot, a lot more knowledgeable in the practical application of money which i really truly believe in it's just not about energy you practically get to be a certain way with money you get to be a steward of money um but one thing that came in when you and i before we before we started the conversation what came in is entitlement so what i've heard sometimes people do um and my, my clients actually find themselves in that place is but i'm doing all the right things i'm owning my worth i'm doing the self-love i'm doing this and this well, you're doing, 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 doing the right thing. Yeah. So you feel like you're entitled to then receive, but yeah. you are not truly still owning. Ooh, that's deep. 
That is so good. And we notice that we're like, we're doing it all the things. We're so action oriented. Like we're showing up, we're making the calls, we're, we're giving the love, we're drawing the hearts. We're doing like, <laughs> like a lot of the doing, but I love it. That, yeah. and that's where a lot of us are, right? Mm -hmm. But if you think, oh, well, we're in a part of the doing, not the being, not the, the energy work is not being done so much as you're in the tactical, which is like mm -hmm. not the energy flow, right? Yeah. That is, yeah. that is the blocking. Mm -hmm. So there is a difference you guys there's mm -hmm. a difference huge difference yeah mm -hmm. oh my gosh okay so it and this is all so juicy and i know that my brain's popping off so i know yours is this is so good i'm gonna get to this next question and then we'll kind of just flow on how much time we've got and then we'll go into what 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 anna's giving away is so cool you guys but hold on hold on so the next question is that person that is watching right now mm -hmm. speaking into that person and tell them something that has the power to instantly rewire their relationship with money. So you just told them all these things here. And now with that conscious, being able to drop it into them and rewire their mind, it's going to change their life with money. How would you speak into their soul right now? So I love that. And, and I can't rewire your brain. You got to do it yourself. <laughs> and do the work don't ask somebody else to this Derek I love that you said it because it, it gives me an opportunity to speak into responsibility right yeah do the work do the work whatever it takes and when I say do the work I mean shift in whatever you get to shift in and be with whatever situation is coming up for you around money so you can see all the places where you have stopped yourself from having everything you are here to have accept that if you want wealth you can have it accept it just accept it that it can be yours and then what i see tends to happen for people is all the stories come in oh but it hasn't shown up oh but it's not here yet oh but how it's going to happen i'm inviting you right now to just let those stories float away yes they're there they're not going away i get it let them just float away just sit them on have them see sitting on the sidelines and truly start accepting that it's possible for you to begin with that you are here to not strive or struggle that was the biggest thing for me give up the struggle right give up the the victim mentality around money that somebody outside of me has control over where money will go and then they will take it away when the, you know when it when I, and i have no control over it right so give up all of that let just let it sit on the side you don't have to completely give it up just let it sit on the side and right now, and like I love Derica because that's exactly the visual I used to get, I used to play with my clients with. Imagine that there is an opening the size of a straw, mm -hmm. right in your solar plexus and your heart. So somewhere in that area, you get to choose where it is. There is an opening that's the size of a straw. And just for a moment, as I'm speaking right now, allow it to start stretching open gently. It's it's a beautiful gentle stretching. And when it stretches, it actually feels like you can take more air in. Like you can take more air in. It's not hurting anything. It's not breaking anything. It's just gently opening up. And then as it does, feel like there is a lot more flow available in your body right now. And that straw becomes a hose, becomes a hose. And then allow yourself to see how much bigger you can, you can allow it to be. You get to control how big it is. And accept that you are the only one who determines how big or small that space is and what's coming in right now energetically so i don't know i don't know who needs to hear this but give up a story that when you have somebody else suffers so when you have it equals somebody else suffers they go without give it up give it up what if every single time the money has flown through somebody and into your space, you are a stand that it expands in the world for everybody, including the person that just flew, just came through, if they choose it, because I believe we all have a choice. I really do. So let yourself, let that flow open up for you. And sometimes there is a discomfort because there is a responsibility that comes with it. Now you get to be a responsible steward of money. You get to be responsible with how it flows, where it goes, what do you do with it, and who you be when you let it out so you don't hoard it. Yes, it doesn't mean that you don't get to have investments and savings. And what if you allow it freely into the world, knowing that the more you expand out into the world with love 
and allowing the expansion to come through you, the more of it is available in the world, including for you. Woo! Good. Where's my mic, I gotta drop it. Where's the mic drop? Oh That's my awesome. God. Yes, that was on fire. There's so much, so much gold in what you just said. And I feel it. I know that you're watching this is feeling it. That story, that story just released. You set that story to the side and any other stories and your heart opened up and you're just open and you're that vortex of receiving. Thank you so much, Anna. We're going to get, I know you guys are feeling this. Hold on, we're not done. She just gave you all of that transformational wisdom and now she's giving you something else. Anna, how can they connect with you? How can they get your gift, girl? Tell us a little bit more about it. Great. So if you're on social media, I am on different platforms at Anna, at Anna, the manifesting artist. Okay. At Anna, the manifesting artist. Now, if you click on whatever links you're sharing, Derica. Yep. And I'll be here. <laughs> yep. Awesome. Great. You have an access to a masterclass, a recording, a teaching, call it whatever you want to call it. I sat down and I mapped out five steps to how I came to birthing my highest soul level body of work in alignment with my purpose and prosperity, even though I wasn't sure what my purpose was. So it's available for you. It's five steps that I implemented. And then I kept implementing over and over again with my clients. It's coming together, bringing together who you are, why are you here? What it is that you came here to overcome, which is your life lesson. And then how do you merge your relationship with money? So you can actually bring into the world that special a gift, create an impact that you're here to make right now, because planet earth is undergoing a tremendous transformation. And if you are awake, you're here to flow money through you in a very particular way, making an impact and receiving I actually call it cleaning money through our system so the money can be a gift, seen as a gift and a tool versus this thing that just keeps us stuck. So all of that is five steps in that in that recording, in that um, lesson, masterclass, call it whatever, Yeah, <laughs> but it is yeah. a recording. <laughs> oh my goodness, what a beautiful gift, you guys. That's just going to completely cement everything that she spoke about here today that we got to sit in and witness. That is, please get it. There's a link. You're going to get that right all in, in the comments. You're going to get the link to that, how to connect with her, her name, social media. I love everything about this woman. Every time I see anything she posts or puts out there, I feel Feel the shift. So please do make that connect. Thank you again, Anna. Thank you so much. It was so mm. beautiful. Mwah! Thank Anna's you, Derica. Gonna, uh, thank you, thank you. She's going to exit the stage here. You all stay there. We're going to get some water and keep going. But everyone, round of applause, sending her out with this beautiful energy. Mm. Bye bye. bye.